got to hit the gun. You over. <laughs> Can I get a mulligan? You're live. You're hey, live. I was wondering why, why people said, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm not seeing anything. Well, it is April 1st. We joked. Bingo. There like, we go. Cue, cue the drop. Oh, man. How's it going, everybody? It's April. We've been talking for uh, for five minutes. Yeah, yeah you missed all the, great, the all the best stuff. So sorry. it really was. And we dropped all of the information, all the the nitty and the gritty, the fun stuff. Yeah, pretty and, much um, just wrapping up at this point. So. Yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> I'm not sure I can uh, I can actually go any further. I'm I'm milked. This cow is milked. Sarah, but let's do this again. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Good. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got. Uh, oh man, look at this! Look at all these beautiful colors here on all the, the screen. All the power here too. Wow. People are going to be coming in, coming out as they will. We kind of gave an open invitation to a bunch of guests, a bunch of developers, a bunch of friends, network members, uh, me, and uh, <laughs> and hopefully we entertain. So let's let's. From my screen, I got Cade Peterson. How's it going, buddy? Francisco. Cool. I didn't even wait for him to answer. No, no, I just realized I was on mute again. This is the world we live in. I'm good. How are you guys? Doing well. Francisco, how are you? Hi, I'm I'm all right. How are you? Oh, thank you for asking. I'm doing great. How about you? How are you doing, Julia? Great. Yeah, I mean, it's a Monday and it's April, so I can't say I'm 100% pleased, but overall, I'm feeling pretty okay. <laughs> And and we got Jeff and Jack. We've got some AGH uh, blood in here. How are you, folks? Jeff. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing well. So You're polite. Doing yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well too. But I gotta admit, I'm I've ducked out of a family Easter weekend get together. So I'm here for a good time, but not a long time. Okay. So, <laughs> so we'll get everything. Every minute can. I'm here is more trouble I'm in when I leave. <laughs> We'll tell the family that we this are is how very, much very I love all you people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Paul. I'm good. good. Formally good. good. Very good. Everything Gareth. Good. Gareth. Patterson, good to see you, my friend. And, Hello, and, 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 and <laughs> I'm not introducing anybody else throughout for the rest of the day. Now this is this is where we just talk. So, yeah, let's let, let's talk about some adventure games. Julia, what do you got going on? What are you working on right now as we, <laughs> as we try to get through this April 1st? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, still working on the Crimson Diamond. I'm working toward my 2024 release, which should be like late summer. So that's coming. That's coming along. It's coming along. So late can't complain. Summer. Yep. So maybe I'm very excited like... about this. Like I actually talked to Roberta Williams about your game and I'm like, have you played this? She's like, I did pull the demo. And she's like, she's like Colonel's Bequest is an old favorite of mine, obviously. So good to see yeah, that had to be back in the day too. Yeah, that I mean that's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to the fanfare is yeah, Roberta Roberta Williams is gonna be there. She knows about the game. Maybe I can get a pull quote, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we can make that happen, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So you said that your game's coming out, which is Crimson Diamond, towards the end end of summer. Cade, your game is coming out real soon. May sixteenth. Yeah. We submitted it to all the consoles Thursday of the GDC week, which is a week and a half ago, and like hoping everything comes through. But yeah, no, it's locked in. We already have pre-orders um, around the world, so. Oh my god, like it's about to get really real, but can you tell us a little bit about your game? Oh, I'm sorry. It's called hey, what... <laughs> I'm so like heads down so long that I forget that people oh, everybody knows about it. Um it's called Read Memory. Game. Everyone knows, don't they? I don't think so, but we'll see. <laughs> but it's called Read Only Memories Neurodiver, and it's the sequel to our first one called Twenty Sixty Four Read Only Memories. And both of these games are like basically love letters to early 90s Japanese adventure games. Um, and this time around, we took like a slightly modernized take on like the old style color palettes and like animations and um, instead of like, you know, kept to those old rules, we kind of like made it slightly more modernized, but made it still 
feel and look good, hopefully. Um, yeah, we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this one, so and it's about as perfect as we could make it. Like we really went the distance and took forever. Like our announcement trailer for the announced date for the release, um, we actually poked fun at ourselves because we pushed off the release date year after year after year after year, and we're finally like, okay, it's for real coming this year. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Francisco knows all about that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a pandemic. I'm just going to blame it on the pandemic, but it was a little bit more complicated than that, but that did throw a major wrench into everything. So, yeah, but I think everybody will like it. So, um, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm certain of that. And Francisco, your game's coming out next week. So, uh, everyone... <laughs> No, it's not. Uh... <laughs> April Fools! So. April Fools! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, but actually, uh, I, I realized that given that it's April and if I hit, put my nose to the grindstone and with what I have left to do, I should have a good idea of when I'll release, uh, by July. So if everything works out, I've decided that I will, if it's, if it all works out and it's ready and I can say... I will officially announce the release date of Rosewater at the Adventure Game Fanfare. So, oh, that's if awesome. there is one, if there isn't one, I'll just say later this year. But <laughs> no, I, I heard that right. sentence and I just didn't hear the if at the beginning. So I, all I heard was the. Uh, I will. Oh announce. man, we got a ton yeah. of people that are that are chatting, that are saying hello to everybody. There's a lot of people that are on vacation. You know, three of them are in, in two of them are in here. <laughs> well, at least, uh, at least. Anna is, and um, mm -hmm. now Gareth is. Gareth works a lot, so him being home is like being on vacation. <laughs> Some people in the chats are are on. We've got Terenzo Entertainment in here that he makes uh, Legends of Castile. Have you guys seen that one? What's coming yes. up? That looks that looks beautiful. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slat Studio got themselves a game coming as well. Cypher Bloom, everyone's wishing everybody a, a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful holiday. Sarah Kelly, oh, by the way, Sarah, wonderful job on uh, Girl in the Tower. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Dude, and got pipes. We'll be Dude, talking a little yeah. bit more about that throughout the day because uh, there's some fun King's Quest vinyl stuff that's coming down, uh, coming down at us. Let's see, Luke Jensen's in here giving everyone greetings. Friend, uh, Alan Christ Christofferson, thank you. He's uh, he told us that we're lying. It's not April first because where he's at, it is it's April second. I wonder if he's a, a friendly Australian. Oh man! So yeah, keep on keep on saying. Just let everybody know who who's just coming in right now. We're going to be doing uh, uh, announcements at seven o'clock. Some of the fun stuff that we're going to be having going on at at the convention but we left one developer who is currently working on the game paul phantom fellows and in yours is coming out this year as well right it's all true yeah take totally it away true. paul I'm, making, <laughs> I'm doing i'm doing stuff a lot of a lot of stuff so i'm making making the music now for it pressing this thing mm -hmm. all 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 week it's been it's been okay it's going okay it's, it's it's going good. No, it's, it's everything super uh, hard, but no, it's going really good. Uh, hopefully, I'll be I'll have mine out uh, summertime as well. Maybe 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 be able to launch it like during or at the fanfare. Maybe the music's going a little better than I thought it would. Like I gave myself like a couple of months for the music, and I'm I'm rapidly getting through it. It turns out music was like the one thing I already knew how to do, so that, that's actually going pretty well. <laughs> so maybe I'll be done that soon, and, and I might be able to, yeah, might be able to get it out, like launch it at the fanfare. That's that's the current goal. A lot of asterisk marks. We'll see. <laughs> do you, do you get rusty playing music? I if I don't pick up a guitar, I I am rusty. It's not like riding a bicycle for me. Right. It definitely hurts more. It like does. Yeah, you got to build yeah. up the uh, yeah. 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 All right, so uh, everyone who's in here has their game on our 33 top 33 adventures that you have to play in 2024, we hope, right? 
and uh, and we want to just say thank you guys for everything that you have been doing for the community. Can't wait. We've got two developers in here that are about to go put out their first games. Is it is it nerve wracking? Is it exciting? <laughs> Both. Terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want it just to come, Julia? Or you want to milk uh, it out a little bit longer? <laughs> I I could work on it forever. <laughs> I I I still enjoy. It's been a long time coming, but I still enjoy working on it when I when I work on it. Um, and part of me, yeah, it's very scary to launch something. I don't know what's going to happen on the other side of that. Um, but yeah, I. It, it's going to be great to share it finally with everybody, like the whole thing, you know, like chapter one, like the demo has been out for ages, but to get to people to see everything that that's, that's happened up until then, well, since then, it's going to be yeah, very exciting. So I'm very much looking forward to it, but it is really freaky, especially, yeah, from first time game dev, first time launching a game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've been taking, you know, a lot of people's advice and talking to a lot of other game developers who've been there before, like Francisco, and uh, just getting, yeah, getting a lot of guidance and just been there, been there and, and what to expect and all that. So I'm really fortunate that we have such a wonderful adventure game community to like really draw on for that support. Pushing up roses is saying that she can't wait for uh, for your game. Speaking Aww. of the adventure, adventure game community, oh, can we? Yeah, can we indirectly plug? Of course, pushing up roses also save your games podcast. So that was awesome. yeah. In yeah. fact, yeah. Matt yeah. just popped in. I see we've just been joined by a very special boy. Oh, the jumper! <laughs> yeah, doggone it, Francisco, you stole it. Oh, he, you made him leave. <laughs> uh, well, did I? No. Oops. Oh I no. And he's back. Yeah, yeah. Um, special boy, as some call him. And by some, we'll call him. No, no, seems like a mis- oh. <laughs> apparently, uh, apparently that we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to say that. Only Sarah can uh, <laughs> can, can say that. Yeah, so save your game. Uh, they're, they're killing it. They're putting out a podcast every week. That's, uh, that's a lot of work. It's hard to be creative and, and actually enjoy what you're doing every every single week we'll we'll bring that back up once he comes back well, that's in. that's how we started out we were all gun ho this is like once a week this is easy man we're so full of pnv and this is and you know we did about four of those and went okay we got to scale back it's a way too yeah i used to do a newsletter once a week and then i was like this is too much and then i did it once a month and then i did it once a quarter and i haven't i think it's been about a year or maybe more since i did my last newsletter so Oh I man! Well, I think you. Like, I I think we found out what Julia can do before the community give her a little break after she releases her game because she she does she's the best example out there right now in keeping people you know up to date That's and keeping right. people entertained. Oh my goodness! The Gazette, sixty six uh, months in a row. Wow. Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> I will say that if I have a board, my boring superpower is consistency. So I'm going to try to make that work for me. <laughs> That's literally the best thing you can have in this industry. So keep at it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys had mentioned, or Francisco had, oh no, it was Cade who said, whew, it's getting nervous. It's coming out. Tell us a little bit, like what comes up and what comes in the last couple of weeks or the last month? Like, what is the things that uh, that's going through your brains and going through your fingers and striking the keyboard before um, before it pops? So there's so many things that happen on the back end if you're releasing like a commercial game, like especially when it's trying to be multi-platform sim ship across all of them at the same time, because um, there's so many unknown things that can happen and like surprises and like freak out moments. Like it's usually you know. Um, the main thing that's like a big hassle is there's two things really it's the it's the getting the consoles to approve your each individual build that you submit um because pc is like super easy in comparison um but the other thing is you have to all your uh, marketing that goes you know because you should have started marketing at least a year or two before the game's even out but then like the last like run up to the release is like kind of a big deal because you want to get like that's like sort of a fever pitch so that on launch day, boom, you'll have like, you know, a good amount of people talking about it, people buying it, whatever. Um, and then of course the after stuff, but like, we've already put together like our run up to marketing plans and it's a matter of just making sure that goes. But right now we're just sort of nervously waiting for all the consoles to give data feedback. So far it looks like um, the one trickiest one, which I won't name, 
might actually just pass it the first time, which is unheard of for this form. Um, but we'll see. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of sweating bullets until all those things are approved because like, there's so many unknown things. And, um, so is that why sometimes things are released? You know, obviously, I'm probably speaking more along the, like the lines of larger larger triple a or double a games but they're released specifically for only a certain platforms at first and then subsequently trickles in a little bit more later on or um it depends so sometimes it's a feasibility for the studio because like our last game we did it like one platform at a time and that was not by design and i wasn't running the studio back then um they did it just because it was you know a bunch of first timers kind of doing it as they could and the fact that they were indies getting like support and stuff from the consoles in the first place that was kind of a big deal 10 years ago um this but uh but when it comes to like different platforms that might get released at different times um the, sometimes it's uh well sometimes it's like dirty political stuff like for example one of the consoles says that if you don't release the game on their console if you put it on another one of the two big ones within a week of them going they won't publish it at all ever so that kind of forces like a similar date situation um other ones like other situations um might be like where one of the platforms like could be like epic store or one of the other pc stores too maybe they paid a license to get it like exclusively as to be like the only pc one for six months or whatever period of time. It could be a, like an exclusivity thing like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's other random things happening on one of the consoles also that is withhold, that's like holding up a bunch of like <clears throat> legal agreements from being signed. So like a lot of studios are like having to hold it, like hold their games because if they can't release on that one, they can't release on any of them. So it's like a really weird thing, but um, each of the consoles has such like weird different things you have to take into consideration and also like their lot QA teams like their platform QA teams that approve the games are very different in terms of quality and that shifts up and down over the years also like some years they're good and sometimes they have a lousy group that doesn't do a good job and makes mistakes rejects a game even though it's perfect and you resubmit the same build and then they're like it's approved it's like different teams thing uh, yeah but it's a dark black box you're putting it into so you don't know what's going to happen so you need to make sure you submit it plenty of time before your launch date but you kind of need to announce a launch date before that but it's like you're chasing this moving target and it's a real like, stressful time <laughs> um mm. that's kind of the whole summary it's a bunch of moving parts basically um and you just gotta like try to make all the stars align at the right time um and and it's going to be aligning on May sixteenth. Mm -hmm. We put a we put a uh, we put a line in the sand. We're doing it. <laughs> so, um, and what's funny is like I already started noticing like pre order links around the world. Like Amazon Japan already has a pre order box, and like Target dot com in America already does. And we're like, wait a second, hold up. Um, and then I was like, wait a second, no, don't hold up. I want to see all the stores. Just do it. Right? <laughs> yeah, because like Amazon UK and Germany haven't done it yet, but like. US did and Japan did and uh, there's a bunch of other sites and I keep like randomly finding them I'm like oh that's cool it's showing up everywhere early but um, we have some talking about some of the more fun side of releasing a game it's like my one of my favorite parts is like when we work on designing the goodies that go into like a collector edition yeah like you know really thinking about okay what kind of fun things would be both on brand for the game but also fans would love um, and like last time around, we did a plushie, so we did another plushie. So, um, along with some other goodies, we did some cute um, like stickers, and there's gonna be like keychain and a whole bunch of other stuff that's like I'm trying not to spoil it. But my favorite's the plushie, and it's of this little ugly creature that's new to this new game. Um, it's called the Neurodiver itself, the little synthetic psychic creature. It looks like a shrimp meets a face hugger, <laughs> but. Oh, <laughs> All right. Like alien? <laughs> like, are we talking alien face hugger style? Uh, it kinda, yeah, like an alien, because he's got little tentacles on the front, which make it kind of look like a face hugger, but it's much more cute. It's not looking like a scary scorpion that jumps in your face. Um, um, but it's plushy, so it's going to be extra cute. So, um, and Francisco, you're now 
you're you're a veteran in the industry now. What what is this your is this your what fifth commercial release? Am it's I right? my it'll be my fourth commercial release. Your fourth yeah. commercial release. Well, it seems like you've been you've been releasing them forever because of Ben Jordan too. Yeah, this actually May is going to be Ben Jordan one's twentieth anniversary. Pardon me while I crumble into dust over here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, man. Um, yeah, it's been a while. So also like, forgive what... me, I'm looking over this way. I moved my chat over to my second monitor because I am still actually working on Rosewater as we speak. Same here. Yeah, <laughs> there, I'm trying there to look you go. Up. We can see oh, hello, Matt. Special boy, we can special see Special boy, he's in, everybody. Hey, everybody, can everyone hear me as well? Yes, we can. Yeah. I was having such technical problems, and now I'm here. How's everybody doing? <laughs> well, it, it wasn't that technical. I had, uh, I, I guess I didn't give you the proper, like, moderator privileges, so you couldn't, uh, you couldn't do anything. You, we could just yeah, see it. Like, okay, yeah. well... Uh, you should have seen me over here <laughs> messing with so many different settings just because uh, you forgot to press a button. Thanks, Josh. Oh, How's everybody doing? It would be the story but... of... It wouldn't be the 20th time today that I've, I've messed up on something. <laughs> Why doesn't everybody tell me every single thing that's been announced so far? Well... Just starting from the top. Well, that should be easy. The big thing is that we haven't actually touched on, and we will touch on. Okay. But I, I okay. get a little bit. There's some big, big, big news. Jack is freaking out all of a sudden. He every time I say there's there's big, big, big news coming, I can feel Jack's heart start banging, banging. But I just, uh, I just blank I can't, out momentarily. Jack, is it, be, is it because, because there's a there's scary, scary big news coming, coming, or there's or there's something that you and Josh disagree on, and Josh is like, it's <laughs> happening, and you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> And he's just going to take over. Be like, yes, it is. Yeah, it's always because I have no idea what he's going to say. <laughs> and it will probably mean an enormous amount of work and stress. But... <laughs> think... and it'd be a great idea. But, you know. Do you think just about everybody in Josh's life says that? Like, I have We're no publishing games, guys. Say. We're publishing whatever... games now. Now, you, you, you guys have ruined my April Fool's joke. Like, mm. oh man, no, it was, uh, there's, there will be no April Fool's jokes today. Everything that we announce today will, will be a hundred percent serious. And I don't have any big, big news. And the answer to that, Matt, is, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. I've got so many things going on that, uh, <laughs> it, people often find things out as I'm doing them. Sorry, Jack. That's all right. We're not but Matt, what you games. did miss was Francisco guaranteeing without a shadow of a doubt that he would be revealed. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. I believe there was an if in his statement. But if he's ready, he will announce the launch date for Rosewater at the Adventure Game Fan Fair. So, so that will be a much ballyhooed uh, announcement. So but only only if it's ready. You won't just announce yeah, it. We're, we we're can't, ignoring that part of the statement. We can't just force it backwards. It. It's going to happen. Oh, if he doesn't announce it, I'll announce it, and then he'll have to put it out by that period of time. Guys, oh, games geez. don't have to be ready to be that. released. Come on. The special announcement is that it's not ready yet. Right. Yeah, you don't have to yeah, have so it. I'll either say it's coming game. out this day, or it's coming out, I just don't know what day. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's all. Definitely 2022, or or 23, <laughs> and probably so we'll 2024. Go back in time to see it. <laughs> oh, man. You know, and, and we are actually going to be making some announcements in 30 minutes <coughs> from now. But we'll say everybody everybody in here will be, if I'm looking really quickly, yeah, everybody in here will be at, at the convention. Some will be uh, showcasing some of their games. Um, most will be involved in, in panels. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. We, we can't announce every little thing yet because we're still – picking and choosing and figuring out exactly the logistics to some of the panels but uh tune in in 30 minutes but stay stay in the meantime we could talk about um uh, save your game and uh and how they burst onto the scenes and are taking the world by storm tell us oh, about save what? your game matt all, you know, 1,000 people in the world are really, <laughs> all of them are listening. Um, 
It's, it's every point and click adventure game fan left. Ones to count, Matt. Ones to count. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's a podcast about, uh, you know, mostly adventure games, but, you know, we, we, we sort of broaden it out to all kind of narrative uh, narrative games. It's me and my friend Pushing Up Roses, who you guys might have heard of from the website YouTube.com that they have now. <laughs> have you guys been there? It's associated with Google, right? Starts with a U, right? Uh, I look. I don't know much about it. She tells me it's a big deal. Uh, but yeah, we we have a podcast, and every single uh, I guess Wednesday. <laughs> oh, it only seems like that. Okay. <laughs> every Wednesday we come on with a new episode. Uh, Julia has been on the show. Um, we have had Alistair Beckett King on the show. Heard of him. And uh, our most recent episode, I think we had a long discussion about Sam and Max. We, we were trying to mostly stay away from just talking about those same, you know, 30 <laughs> games over and over again that all of us talk about all the time. But you mean Stardew Valley? Well, we do talk about Stardew Valley an awful <laughs> lot. Who's playing Stardew Valley? Who's playing the new update? Oh, heck yeah. That's why I was excited for this vacation and to be able to check it out. All the new stuff. Me and my kid play it together. Blue chewy grass. Dude. <laughs> my sister-in-law was playing it all weekend. She didn't even talk to us, so. Must be good. <laughs> I guess uh, yeah, you could I, say I, that Jeff and I have been on, uh, been on the show, too, in a way. <clears throat> have we? What? <laughs> oh, uh, so yeah, so I guess the very first time that me and Roses were on the air together was on an episode of Adventure Game Hotspot with Josh and uh, and Jeff, and it was it, it it was so much fun that yeah, we took it to our, we took it to our own feed and kicked these two guys off. <laughs> good move. Wow. You kept the good part. You edited yeah, us just... out of your episode. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great if I had taken that episode and just posted it on my own feed? Um, hey, I've, no, had yeah, some, uh, I've had some YouTubers do some of that to me before. Yeah. The first time I was uh, I was happy, and then the second and third time, and after that, it's just, yeah, you guys, <laughs> you're stealing oh, yeah, my I, stuff I, now. <laughs> no, I would, I would never. I, I, I wouldn't want to get H-Bomber guide, so. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's again from this weird this like niche website youtube.com you'll have to check it out <laughs> okay and... <laughs> oh man so and uh and this is embarrassing so uh they are on our adventure game hotspot network but they're putting out so much content that it is impossible impossible to keep up and uh but that's changing uh, we we promise that we'll uh, we'll start putting out some articles and and Matt is uh, is one of our writers so you could just write your own stuff. We do that. Uh, Jack would say in name only, but yeah, I'm I'm wondering, uh, you know, is there any sort of proof of this claim <laughs> that the... I, I turn in about one article every three months, so <clears throat> you know. Uh, and if I'm, I'm lucky, not... I get the revisions back too. I'm still waiting on the last round, but anyway, Matt is a fine writer, so I I, I miss his work. So, come on, Matt. You know, he's in school. The boy's in school. The boy's in school. There's a lot of writing involved. In uh, uh, yeah. Oh, but that's boring writing. writing. Come on. Yeah, you're right. Have you guys played? Gosh, I'm I'm trying to think of the name, and I know that Matt has because you talk about it a lot on your show. Something Monkey of Island. Life. Yeah, Monkey Island. So the the puzzle game, uh, Tower, not Tower Islands of Insight. Islands of Insight. Yes, Jack is like uh, I'm pretty sure you owe me a review on that, Joshua. Oh, I am a hundred percent sure. Yes, Joshua is doing a rare uh, review of his own for us. Then, but apparently, allegedly, is allegedly. Are we adding allegedly to all the words. Hey, that, I'm not the only one being called out, so I feel a little bit better. Hey, I will say this: the criteria. To putting out reviews for Adventure Game Hotspot, one of the criteria is you have to finish the game. So you may never get that, Jack. <laughs> yeah, in most in theory. cases, when, when yeah. an ending is realistically attainable. Yeah, yeah Islands of Insight is is sort of. I, I think there is a an ending of sorts to it, um, but it's a yeah, it's a never ending. Um, 
massively multiplayer adventure game. Do you guys remember um, when Roberta and Ken first retired from adventure games? The the statement was that they were going to go away on their boat until they figured out how to combine MMOs and adventure games. <laughs> and, and they never, they never aren't did. Aren't they responsible for just, MMOs? <laughs> but, w would you say that they're responsible with, for MMOs? I know because my, anyone they, remember the Realm Online? Because they built the Realm Online? Yeah. yeah, but there was multi-user dungeons before that. I mean, when did yeah. uh, Neverwinter Nights came out in, on AOL? Neverwinter um, Nights was after the Realm Online. So I was playing the Realm Online when it first came out. You're not that uh, old. Was, That's a lie. So, <laughs> and the fact that I just said I'm in school also makes me seem much <laughs> younger than I am. Uh, so, it's weird. I, uh, I like to point out that I'm in school at the exact... I went to college at the exact same time as my 19-year-old son. So, uh... That that's that's a fun little fact about me. So the the just just but, a quick just a quick thing though. Uh, Neverwinter Nights came out in ninety one. I think the, I think did that the question came out in like ninety four or ninety five or something. Neverwinter Nights didn't start as an MMO though. Yeah, it did. It started as an AOL thing. No, it was just it was a okay <laughs> maybe I, I I don't. Uh... I'm not talking about the Bioware Neverwinter Nights the. The uh, early 2000s one. That's what I thought you were talking about. No, okay, no, no, no. so you're no, saying the that there was Neverwinter a Neverwinter Nights, yeah. And then I think you know before that there was text-based multi-user dungeons and. Uh, so you're saying yeah. there was a graphical Neverwinter Nights MMO yeah. that happened before the Realm Online. Right, hmm. like a few, by solidly three or four years, I think. Consult the Google. I think I think Jeff is on that. Oh, all right. So I'm looking at I'm looking at screenshots of this game now. It is like um, <laughs> like the Bard's Tale kind of like. Yeah, I was gonna say um, what was that Nintendo game where it was like four player and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Never been a four player Nintendo game. <laughs> What? what was That's that kind of. One? You're right. There have been. There was a Zelda four player. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm you could kidding. take. Yeah, because you got to keep taking turns though, not simultaneously. <laughs> All right. Oh, I, man. I, I'll return. I'll return to this. I don't have the information well, to say. But so what I remember is I was playing the realm at the time, and uh, so EverQuest came out, and uh, Star Wars Asheron Galaxy. Star Wars Galaxy is a little bit later, but yeah, Asheron's Call came out, Asheron's and people Call. just kept. Uh, the Realm Online just kept bleeding players, yeah. and it used to make me so upset, because I was like, this thing's gonna die, and it did, but tiny little fan communities have held on to that game for the past, whatever, 25 years, and you can still play the Realm Online today. It's just owned by, like, a group of the players. You can play any of those old long. MMOs. There, you, can, you can play anything just the way you remembered it, because with private servers now, oh, my goodness. Yeah. You're just yeah. hanging out. Norseman Games had it for many years, I thought. Norseman was one of the ones. They, they managed yeah. it for many, many years. And then now, I saw last year they made an announcement it's gone to, like, a fan-supported community. Yes, that is correct. Norseman, Norseman held it for a while. Let's ask the devs uh, in here, though. I, Let's, I, I check it. I check back in on it every couple. Uh, yep, same here. Like once every two years, I pop in. <laughs> I, I still play Star Wars Galaxies, and then I dip. I play Star Wars Galaxies all the time. Actually, I list, the private servers are are the way to go. But we have developers in here who make games. Do you guys play the games anymore? Like, or will you not play adventure games? Like, what's your what's your adventure game story? Game. You want to go first, Julia? Game story. <laughs> sure. Well, actually, we have in chat here. We have Disaster Squad, who is another solo game developer, and he's made three games that are kind of adventure games slash a little bit of combat hybrid. And I'm playing his, and they're all free. There's Cursed 1, Cursed 2, and Cursed 3. And I'm playing the first Cursed right now, and I'm just trying to find out how to get past the ghost right now. But um, that's what I've been playing. I started playing that um, last weekend, and it's been a lot of fun. So shout-outs to other, other game writing games. Writing it down. Yay. 
And yeah, it's Zasukon. How do I get past that ghost? I try to get past the ghost and I can't fight him and then he kills me. <laughs> That's what I've been playing. Uh, yeah, Francisco, what have you been playing? Have you been playing Red Dead Redemption? No? No. No. Uh, what have I been playing? Oh, I've been playing a lot of Hitman again. Um, I, my friend, I have a friend named Nick who is obsessed with Hitman and they asked me to do a stream of Hitman with them on Friday, and I hadn't played Hitman in a really long time, and I, I the bug bit me again. So <laughs> I've been, I've, and the worst part is that I have Hitman 1, I'm talking about like the remake, the 2018, right. I have Hitman 1 and I have Hitman 2, and I swear I've owned those games for at least three years. And I guess Hitman kind of counts as an adventure game because we, we had this discussion. It's very it's much elements. like that open world. It's a it's an open each map is like an open world puzzle box that you have to solve. So Hitman's an adventure game in my book. <laughs> but I've had this I've had these games for at least like two years, and there's about six levels in each of them. I've played maybe two uh, in each because I just keep playing it over and over and over and over again. Like Sapienza, that's that's my jam. If any of you know what I'm talking about. Which, by your faces, looks like no one knows what I'm talking about. But that's okay, because Hitman's great. And, uh, and People yeah. die. Many corpses yeah. were left. No, it's great. It's literally an adventure game, except it's like literally the main puzzle is just use fiber wire on neck. Yeah, quietly, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Is this going to turn into a what an adventure game it actually is? Well, show. Doesn't every adventure game conversation... <laughs> devolve into that at some point it has to <laughs> I, I feel like it's in the constitution of uh, there's going of to be adventure a game. literal <laughs> yeah. there's going to be a literal fist fight at adventure game fanfare over this. <laughs> somebody's going to be like zelda's an adventure game and somebody else is going to be like, no it's not <laughs> oh man you guys are talking about portal too much what <laughs> yeah okay. that's it i'm going to definitely have words with that person if, uh... <laughs> <laughs> did somebody there's... say that about your podcast no Oh, oh no, go. no. But but people do, however, get uh, it, it is a it's a passionate conversation. It's a passionate conversation. You know, people have strong opinions on what an adventure game is and isn't. I, I don't Categorization, know. categories uh, are our servants, servants, not our masters. Not right? Masters. Like, like uh, genre yeah, classifications yeah, are to help us find, find new stuff, stuff, not to push <laughs> things away. And uh, and 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 and. and do less, do less cool, cool stuff. stuff. I, I've said this a million times. We have to stop gatekeeping. We we have to stop gatekeeping when it comes to adventure games. Let's just have some have some fun. But it is a here, passionate here. discussion. Yeah, you don't go on Reddit and and talk about like Tomb Raider as an adventure game. Don't do it. <laughs> Let me tell you, the adventure game category has become so broad nowadays. It I mean, is. All the, like, it is. Oh, ones. I think you could say Zelda is an adventure game. It's not a point and click adventure game. See, okay, here's what I think. I think I think there's this confusion where it's like if you're on an adventure in the game, that maybe doesn't make it an adventure game. It's like there's a lot of like adventurous games where like the game's centric around being on an adventure, but like the whole time you're shooting stuff or whatever. Like is is that maybe the line? Well, we got to remember too, Paul and Julia, mind you, are literally like bringing us back to the 80s to where we're typing in commands. So they will not let the adventure adventure industry go. It's not, it will not evolve on their watch, right? Nope. <laughs> so, Julia, have you picked up? Um, we, we talked about this on Save Your Game, and I don't know if anyone else here has played it, but I want to, I want to raise it to everyone else. Have you played Armed and Delirious yet? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that who, here knows, who here knows what this game is? I don't know what it is. I've okay. either played it or I, I know I have it. It, it yeah, uh, it is a it was a game that I thought I dreamed for so long uh, that my my stepmom for some reason had, uh, and it's it's like this it's this weird yeah it's this weird fever dream of early 3D. <laughs> <laughs> There's this strange, like, grandmother who keeps all her inventory in her bra, and she's trying to, rep like, rescue her family who were kidnapped by aliens after they were abusing animals. It's a bizarre. It's a bizarre, bizarre. I believe the phrase hot mess uh, would factor into any uh, description of that game. Sounds yeah, incredible. It was, it was nuts. 
it's it's very it's just nonsense it's from that era uh in the the late 90s as adventure games were getting into 3d and oh, it was all sorts of uh all sorts of foreign studios were getting their hands in and some of the games were incredible and some of the games were just like this like you're just kind of like what am i looking at what is any of this I actually remember seeing the ad after you, we had spoken about it. I looked it up and I'm like, yeah, oh, I just saw the Delirious ad. I remember that seeing that in computer magazines. Um, I have not played it because I think my brain was trying to protect me. But yeah. thanks for reminding me again. Thank <laughs> your brain for doing so. We're going to, yeah, no, Julia, we, we're going to have to live stream that game. We're going to have to try. We're going to have to see if we can make it all the way through Armed and Delirious. And at the end, yeah, we're all driven mad, and then we... <laughs> no more game, no game, no Crimson Diamond release. It's over. Here's my one of my favorite things is the box art. Uh, brags five CDs! Exclamation point. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. That is so. That is so nineties. That is like so nineties. You measure the success or how good it is based off how many times you have to like five stars. Push, push like the eject CDs. button. <laughs> It was never just five CDs. It was, it was five multimedia CD ROMs. Oh yes, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. CD CD ROMs. Oh man, now we're now we're getting into nostalgia. This is a conversation. This is exactly where I wanted this to go. Tell me about <laughs> your. Tell me about your 486 DX25, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> can I can I tell a, can I tell a really nerdy anecdote? Dude. Please. So when I was a no, kid, of course. I when I was can. in fourth grade, we upgraded from a 286 to a 486. We had a dot matrix printer. Oh yeah. And and we got a. And I faked being sick so I could leave <laughs> school early, so I could go home and play with my new computer. And and then I admitted that I had faked being sick, and I got in trouble and I couldn't use the computer for a week. <laughs> well, that's uh -huh. well, was that I wasn't like? very smart as a child. No. But I so was... can Those I ask printers you what were you... great for birthday planners, man. Tell what did you here, use to get out of school? Printer going off. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, everybody. What What was the excuse that you used to get out of school? I think Tell I me I it was diarrhea. I, no, well, I think I just said general stomach troubles or something. I think probably like throwing up or I don't know. We don't need to get that specific. What did you play? What oh, no, you, play? you started this. Oh, yeah. You yeah, made you're... the rules. Now you general, can't change them. General stomach remember... troubles is great. When you start a new job, make sure you tell your boss, like, I have like a thing with my stomach so that anytime you don't want to come in, oh, the, my stomach thing's acting up again. Uh, but yeah, what'd you play? I, I want to know. I'm pretty sure, I don't remember specifically, but I remember in that era, the thing that wowed me the most was I had King's Quest 4, and I had I had gotten King's Quest 4 for Christmas, and of course I had only played it with like the PC speaker, and then I played, I loaded it up with the new sound card, and I was like, remember those old ads for Memorex where the guy, like, his, his head blown his, off? The, <laughs> like, his hair would get blown yeah. back, it was like, it was like, that's like how I felt, I was like, oh my King's Quest has great music. Also, I'm really old. I, I'm dating myself with that reference, but I don't care. Oh no, man! Some of those advertisements like, when you're flipping through a magazine. This is a this is the thing that you had. I don't know if anybody who's watching is younger than us. There's papers, and you just you know you go left, sometimes right. You lick your finger at times, you know, and you you see an advertisement. Those were great. At the end, sometimes they had some uh, some fun little. Uh, tips on how to beat a game oh man that was the stuff <laughs> does anyone remember in the magazines they used to give you lines of code and if you bought like all the episodes and you typed it all in you could make a game i remember the books like what? the micro adventures and stuff but not that i i had a subscription to 321 contact magazine and at the back they used to <laughs> kate knows what i'm talking about uh, that was a long time like i love that show i forgot the yeah <laughs> And there was one there was one issue that had like a whole uh, step by step instructions on how to make a text adventure in basic. And I did and it was about a haunted house, but then I couldn't play it because I knew all the answers because I'd coded it. So it was a good learning experience, but it was like I can't play this now. 
And he's friends were gonna to say, play, but nobody will. <laughs> well, I didn't have any friends who had computers, so I couldn't give no, it to him. I get that. So. I thought you were going to say you couldn't play it because it was too scary. He's scared. Uh -huh. you, you, you coded though your own haunted <laughs> house game, and you're like, ah, no, nope, it's too spooky. I mean, have you coded in basic? It's pretty scary. I put too many ghosts in my game. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'm scared of it. in basic, actually. GW basic. Well, wow. I mean, game in basic, actually. Hmm. So, Julia, what was your... Did you ever try any of these... Uh, these little side projects prior to getting into creating your game? Well, I mean, well, in terms of like the coding, I do remember Commodore VIC-20 and having books like that to try to just copy word for word things. And I never got them to work. So I'm kind of jealous that Francisco actually got the actual game to work. Although now that hearing his story about how he couldn't even play it, like I almost feel like it's probably better that I couldn't and I didn't spend all that time. Um, oh. But yeah, yeah, like when I started to make my game, I, I actually got the opportunity to, to work on other games, which was nice. Um, mostly, mostly art stuff. In fact, pretty much all art stuff. So yeah, I mean, Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator by Strange Scaffold got released a few years back. Uh, Witch Stranding is also by Strange Scaffold. And Playdate, there's a recommendation dog. So if anyone has Playdate, there's a free game on catalog called Recommendation Dog, and I did art and, and art for um, art directed for that one. So a few things, a few things on the side, but for the past couple of years, it's been yes, yeah, super only Crimson Diamond, and hopefully after the launch, I can do super only Crimson Diamond two and just get to work on that. But we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Julia, Julia also did some amazing. Uh art for Rosewater. She did some great little cards for person <laughs> where you uh, meet a fortune teller. And so Julia did like the designs for the for the card close ups, which are great. Yeah, I love collabs like that. Like uh, you have Inspector Waffles as well. I got to do like one little like a uh, wool ball card and stuff. So yeah, it was like so fun because I mean, obviously, yeah, Francisco, I don't want to make you feel or sound old. But yeah, like you've done like, you know, a dozen Ben Jordan things and other things all together. And I remember being super inspired. And that's how I started. And to get to do like art for your game, and it's in your game. It's like, yeah, totally incredible and something I'd never imagined that I'd get to do. So very cool. How about you, Paul? This is actually a self-portrait. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> nice. How about you, Paul? What was your What was your past experiences before jumping into the big leagues? None. I, I, I had a conversation with with a dear friend uh, goes by goes by Grundislav up in one of those corners, and he's like, <laughs> I was like, "Do you have any advice for for somebody just starting to make a game?" And he's like, "Just just don't make it long. Don't do something too big." And now. I ignored that. Three and a half, three and a half <laughs> years later, a 23-hour-long game, seven days. I, I dropped the ball pretty hard on that. But, but it was like what Julie was saying earlier. Like it's, it's a lot of fun doing it. It's like kind of addicting, like sitting down and creating your own little world. And um, that's maybe like a, a charming, positive way to put it. More cynical way is like this godlike power of making things come to life. But either way, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's fascinating. Like the first time I saw. I did like a little bit of, of scripting in AGS and saw the character like walk to the thing and do the thing. It's just like, it's like a dopamine hit. Like, oh, like I need more of this. This is incredible. So, yeah. It's yeah. like Frankenstein. Like Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Frankenstein monster Frankenstein. coming to life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> today we learned all adventure game creators are megalomaniacs. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if it makes you feel any better, I didn't take my own advice because, you know, Cade was saying before about the pandemic and yeah, the pandemic definitely was a, uh, a thing that delayed a bunch of games and stuff but after lamplight city took me two and a half years and i foolishly when i started making rosewater i was like i can make a game at twice the resolution in half the time and so i grossly underestimated how long it was going to take me so well if rosewater is half the game lamplight city is i think we're all oh in my the, god in for some... well <laughs> If it's half the game, then you're going to feel really bad. If we all say, <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, hey, this is exactly can, half. Can we make this twice is, the money, though, game. right? Yeah, well. There's your poll quote. Half of Lamplight City. Half the game Lamplight City is. Oh, this yeah. this is how, our, how we're going to be when we start releasing, you know, adventure games at Adventure Game Hotspot. All we require is half your last game, everybody. <laughs> And just remember, it's April first, guys. We're not, <laughs> we're not, we're not doing that. Oh man, what else are you guys playing? 
what are you playing? Oh, d uh, Francisco, are you not playing that isometric game anymore? Or did you quit on that? I started, I started playing, playing the Thaumaturge, Thaumaturge yes. Yes. Um, but <laughs> Thank I you have for not saying gone that. Back to it. Yeah. yeah. The Thaumaturge, the Thaumaturge is, cool. is cool. It's kind of like disco. I've, I've just, I, to me, it feels like Disco Elysium, but with com combat, but which is just like an RPG, right? Right. But yeah. uh, the, <laughs> the combat, the combat is like card based, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. The most interesting thing for sure about that game is the setting because it's actually like a real historical setting. It's 1905 Poland and I've only played like the prologue in the very beginning, but in the prologue you're like the equivalent of your Kim K Kitsuragi is Rasputin, which is pretty cool. So <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Um, I'm still not quite 100% sure what it's about, but it's I don't cool even know how to say the name. <laughs> Yeah. What the heck is a thaumaturge? A thaumaturge is apparently someone who can sense people's feelings by talking to ghosts from other dimensions. So he's like uh, a Schottenjäger. I'll tell you, thaumaturgy was the type of magic in the realm that had the healing spells. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Way to work the conversation it back just around. Just came full circle. Around. No, uh... <laughs> Thaumaturge, that sounds awesome. You know, uh, I'm going to have to check this out. Talking about the realm, I just remembered, you just triggered a memory, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell this story, but in the, in the uh, spirit of full transparency, I'm going to tell this story. I was, I was kind of a dick online on the realm, because uh, I, remember, I remember one time I was like just messing around, and I went into a tavern, and I, and I talked to this person that was a random person sitting at the table. And I was like, hey, hey, I just found this really cool thing outside the, the walls. And I, I lured them outside of the town walls. And I tried to pickpocket them. But my pickpocket skill was so bad that, they, that I got caught. And they were like, did you just pickpocket me? And I was like, oh, bye. And then I ran away. And then, because I was an idiot, like, 14-year-old, I went back to the same tavern and there they were again. And they were like, oh no, not you again. And I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> How did you learn did out? You learn... Can you help me with this quest, please? Like, uh... Yeah, I was something like, oh, I found something really cool outside the, t the town I walls. Remember... Follow me. The thing was, there was <laughs> actually something really cool outside of the town. There was an Easter egg in that game. I forget the main town, but you went like a few screens out to the east. And there was one tiny little spot. And if you clicked on it, like a pixel thing, it transported you to this place called Stephen's Garden. And Stephen was like the moderator that had seemed to be on that game for like the longest time. And you, you watched him over time get more and more burnt out and more snarky with people as time went on. Uh, but yeah, there was an Easter egg just outside of town. You could find it and there was like this room that nobody really knew about you could go to. Uh, I remember trying to scam people in the Realm Online and my conscious, conscious, conscience, conscience? just took over. Um, so like very similar to you, Fritz, like I would be like, oh, I have the most, uh, the rarest sword and I'll sell it to you for a million gold. And then I'd go to the trading spot and then they'd give me a million gold and I'd be like, I'd like run away. And then I'd immediately message them and be like, I'm sorry. I just tried to scam you. I don't have the sword. I'll give you your gold back. Cause I was also like 12 years old and so uh, like nervous. I was gonna like, I don't know, whatever, go to You're hell. You're gonna get banned? <laughs> You're gonna get banned. I'm just, waiting for the, I'm just waiting for the day that I'm like in an adventure game related thing and I tell that story and someone's like, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> but oh I man. Well, this is the time. I guess it's time to start uh, giving some some news. So uh, I guess that's uh, Jack. So the event's been canceled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and when I said Jack, I wanted him to tell everybody because uh, you know I don't like to give bad news. So yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> you are throwing me today, man. <laughs> the event is not no, this... is not canceled. Uh, let's start this with some uh, with some me. panel. <laughs> Let's, let's start with some we got three more hours to go let's, let's uh let's start with with some panels here that we're gonna we're gonna tell and we can't actually say everything is like i mentioned um 
there is some logistics, some uh, verifying if people actually want to do the panels, yada, 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 emphasis on the yada. So I will name the ones that, uh, that I can name. Uh, so let's start with uh, Ask Me Anything with uh, this couple known as, uh, well, because they're known because it's on their birth certificate or their certificate that they signed when they got married. The Williams, uh, Ask Me Anything. So that's a Sierra thing. That's Barb and Joe, right? The, yes. The, <laughs> Barb and Joe Williams? That's their, that's like their that. yeah. lesser, lesser known and friends. <laughs> oh, okay, Composing for Games. That's gonna that's gonna be Al Lowe, Robert Holmes, Ken Allen is gonna be in that one. What we're, we're not sure if Ken's gonna be in that one right now or not, and we're not sure if uh, we have a couple more that is is on the line. But we have to get con confirmation that they want to be in that. Oh boy, narrative design chat. That uh, I don't know what that is. Talking about narrative narrative design. It's uh, Matt Van Root. We're in games. Yeah. Crucial. Yeah, this is the one I wasn't supposed to announce. Awesome. <laughs> well, you didn't mention eight people, so okay. Yeah, okay, narrative design. Oh, okay, Sierra Days. So this is going to be a fun one. Just a, a lot of stories. We're going to have a bunch of people from Sierra. Big names, little ones, uh, all in the same room telling about stories about about sierra and that one is going to be uh emceed by paul quinn yeah, some know him as drunk master paul youtuber on that that one thing that matt was talking about right yeah i'm hearing that more and more <laughs> uh fnv behind that. the lens we're having an fnv panel which is which oh, is cool boy. yeah cheesier the better i hope how many think, cds is it gonna fit on it's oh. eight. As Roses was bringing up earlier, she was talking about Black Dahlia being on eight, eight CDs. Eight multimedia so. CD ROMs. Oh my goodness. It's eight CDs stars. <laughs> uh, post mortem, King's Quest. So uh, there's a couple people in the chat that are going to be involved in that one too. Like, uh, like Josh Mandel. He's going to be in that. Um, you can guess. I'm not going to uh, say a lot of the names, but uh, you can guess who's going to be in there. Some of the the Williams. I'm terrible at this. You <laughs> really are, yeah. I mean, no <laughs> names at all. What is going on, man? Well, we'll get to the names who are going to be there. Uh, okay. Anyway, it's right, like, yeah. Right. Then they'll kind of, you know, it's like a puzzle. You, you build it, you know, you put things together, and then it becomes like a, like this. I'm already this reaching for the walkthrough now. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what else we got? Oh, a pixel panel. Pixel. I, you guys are all in here. There's one that's not in here today. So Paul is going to be in the pixel pixel panel. As is mm -hmm. uh, as is Julia, is going to be in the pixel panel. Yeah, and uh, there's more. There's more. Tom Hardwich is going to be in that one as well. Oh yeah. And a, yeah. And, hey, uh, and a couple others. Let's see here. Uh, meet the voices. <laughs> this is a fun one. This is what I'm super, super excited about. We have a lot of uh, of awesome voice actors and, and talent that's going to be there. And so we're going to talk about, uh, you know, voice acting in adventure games. Um, we're going to have a live speed run from, as Space Quest historian calls, Speedy Boy. That's uh, One Short Eye. is going to be doing a, a speed run on there. And, and that's what we can say right now. So that's what we can we can say right now. In regards to, wait, should, should we should we just drop it all now, Jack? Or should we should we drop hold away. on? This is your show. Yeah, I didn't actually make notes. <laughs> I, I really, really didn't didn't make notes as to uh, who all is going to be there. But it's going to be it's 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 going to be awesome. Let me get let me actually put some of these together. And uh, and and give in fifteen minutes. I really thought I had notes on here because I was copying and pasting, and now I cannot find my Google Doc where I had everything. So I'm I'm going, uh, I'm going off, just pushing through here. Awesome! This is what you expect from uh, from the Adventure Game Hotspots uh, podcast. So just a little bit, a little bit uh, longer today. 
I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> and how about demos? Are you gonna Oh demos. Uh, demos? That's what I'm looking for. I was trying to find them. I can't I can't find the demos. Um I don't want to say anything because I don't know who you've confirmed and who you haven't. So Okay. I'll, i I have some here. Uh Wildwood Down. So they're gonna be they're gonna be there. Uh Phantom Fellows is going to be uh showcasing their game. Uh Perfect Tides, Station to Station. Meredith Grand is going to be... Uh... Oh, hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm so glad I excited you on something. I'm, I'm really <laughs> bad at this. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Home, A Story of Light. Which, by the way, that looks amazing. The... the Oh, just incredible, incredible drawing and graphics and, and all that. Um, uh, Fogtown. Uh, Fogtown is going to be uh, showcasing as... Uh, Ooh. Hey Jack, what, why don't you tell people about what sh- what Fogtown's all about? Yeah, that's right. I was debating when we were talking about developers earlier. I mean, mm-hmm. technically, we do actually have another one because I am co-writing and co-designing the Fogtown game. Um, and the only reason I'm, we haven't talked about it more is it's, it's a two-part project. We're doing a like a, a pilot TV episode and a game. I'm kind of only working on the game, and we were sort of holding off on that until the pilot was done, which it nearly is, but I mean, it's just amazing. Um, if you can find some, there should be lots of videos out there uh, about it, so I strongly encourage you to find them. Um, it's like part spoof, part loving homage to Sherlock Holmes um, set in a place called Fogtown, but uh, the big catch is it's all done with finger puppets, and these are so amazing. Um, you'll you'll fall in love with the puppets immediately. They're so well done, so well scripted, and everything. So um, it it's going to be hilarious. I've been waiting for this one also. I can't wait. And they put a lot of love into it. It's a. Uh, it. I. I'm super excited as well. Yeah. Uh, War of the Western Deep. It is going to be it, and that's a super cool looking game. Definitely look at it, and, and we'll we'll have this on our, our website as well, at AdventureGameHotspot.com. Uh, what else we got in here so far? Oh, Read Only Memories. We talked about it a little bit. Uh, Cade, Neurodiver. You want to tell us a little bit about that game? Give us a, a brief elevator uh, spill of what the game's all about. Um, Buy me sure. a couple I'm minutes ter- to put my notes together. <laughs> I'm terrible at like elevator pitches, but... I should be good at this by now. Um, it's the sequel to the first Read Only Memories game, and it's uh, it's not exactly a direct sequel in terms of like story that continues. It's like a new story in the same world. Um, but again, it's like a love letter to early '90s Japanese adventure games in terms of like art style and you know things like that. But it's a point point and click adventure. But we threw in a little supernatural angle this time around with like you play the part of this psychic agent named Luna, or her code name is ES88, and you have, she has to, um, along with her little neurodiver creature that helps amplify her powers, like, try to dive into people's minds, and, and this is where the puzzle gameplay mechanic comes in, like, you have to go and discover, like, these um, memory anomalies that are visually displayed, um, and then put together a puzzle, and then resolve the memory, and that helps to further um, understand the mystery behind it, who, which is, who is this golden butterfly, evil person that's kind of attacking the citizens of Neo San Francisco, and like, why are they doing it? Who are they, and maybe how can we stop them? Um, so yeah, cute, little, lightweight, but fun. We, um, it's been, the franchise has been called like a bubblegum cyberpunk, because it's, uh, it's not totally dark and gritty, because it's def- it, everything about it, the franchise has like a little spring of hope through it, I'm like, Cyberpunk, which is dark, <laughs> just period. Um, but we put a lot of love into it, and I'm very excited about it. I'm also going to take a three-month like nap after it. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you tell us a little bit about what, um, like, I'm not super familiar with Japanese adventure games. Could you tell us what they were doing differently at the same time uh, that Western adventure games were doing? Uh, so, like, most of my, when I grew up, I, you know, here in America, we only really got exposed to American adventure games. I didn't get, I didn't even know what Broken Sword was until I was an adult, because <laughs> um, a lot of European stuff didn't come out. And then me, um, same thing with Japan, it wasn't really something that got on my, you know, plate. But uh, a lot of them are, um, a lot of them, I would say, 
get closer to the line of like visual novels, very, very narrative heavy. You have a lot of like talking heads on the side of the screen, like a lot more. Um, it's, you know, like games that inspired ours, for example, would be like Snatcher, which is like Kojima's, like one of his oldest games. Um, and then there's like Dungan Rampa and all these. They're just really fun adventure story, like heavy narrative, which is what we love. Um, and then the art styles are very uh, unique. It's, it's a little anime-ish in terms of art style, like the character design and, you know, the extreme action sort of sequences and whatnot. So I'd say that's the best way to do it or describe it. Um, but the puzzle narrative mechanics are still very similar in most of the games. But So that's like the same thing across the world. But does that help answer the question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've never been asked to describe it before, but that's what I would do. Because like my, like I said, my long, lifelong experience with adventure games was mostly like Western style. So. Yeah, when I saw your game at, because um, you were, um, at PAX West, you were not too far from the Roberta Williams booth, I remember, when you were showing us your game. It's very, uh, very cool stylistically, a very different uh, um, retro visual take from what I'm used to, um, a lot of the kind of uh, uh, pixel art that we normally see. It's a little more stylized. That's not me. That's our creative director, JJ, and his vision. He's the, He's got a very interesting take on like you know how where he takes us through the with the franchise with every little piece of it that we put out there um yeah i i, I love it <laughs> um it's extremely it's, he's obviously very like anime sort of influenced and all that stuff and i think that's great you know um especially when it's not just like the look like the 2d static look but like also when he puts love into like animation sequences it's like really amazing it's worth all the extra time because um you know all that good work does take a lot of time as you know um but yeah no that's all him all the vision i just kind of help make sure that we get to the finish line <laughs> And but, you'll be able yeah. to play that on May 16th. And you can talk to Kate about it at the Adventure Game Fanfare as well. And another game where you'll get to play and talk to the developer who's also here today. We have Crimson Diamond. You want to give us a quick elevator pitch for those of us as if we don't know what that is. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, the Crimson Diamond is a cozy mystery adventure game that kind of looks and feels and sounds like the old Sierra stuff from the late 80s and early 90s. Text parser, Roland MT32 composed soundtrack. But I've taken kind of game design lessons from the intervening 30 years or so to make it a little bit more approachable for people who've never played a text parser game before and hopefully people even who are new to the adventure game genre can have fun with this and, and have a new kind of new slash old game experience because text parsers did fall out of fashion back then but I've, I've been trying to like in my own small way bring them back a little bit. For, for people because it's my favorite way to interact with the game. Um, you play you play Nancy Maple, who is a rookie mineralogist uh, who gets sent up to Northern Ontario to Crimson, which was an ab abandoned mining town. And you're sent there to investigate a diamond claim. And of course you get you know caught up in all everyone's plots and schemes. And it's very much inspired by not only the Colonel's Bequest, but also I get the Christie and Golden Age mystery, mystery novels and things like that. Um, so yeah, just a cozy little time, just like curling up with a little mystery novel in front of the fire, and uh, hopefully, yeah, people are gonna gonna get into it, learn a little, learn some rock facts. That's something in the Crimson Gazette that I'd like to do a lot. Every month there is a different rock fact, and um, all of my own interests have gone into this game. So I, I very much love min the min mineralogy aspect of it and Canadian local history and all the rest of it. Um, so the research and everything has really helped me to not only make the setting of the game realistic, but also deepen my own appreciation and interest in those things. So, Crimson Diamond coming out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really mean it this time. I say that every year, um, but super, truly, no, you know, take backsies. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking at <laughs> summer, late summer launch. And but speaking of you. text parser games, uh, <laughs> I, I want to give the proper credit uh, to the Phantom Fellow in here you guys are bringing it back tell us a little bit about the phantom fellow elevator pitch my friend panicking uh, 
Okay. <laughs> you and me You'll both, buddy. <laughs> You'll be oh, fine. I'm my game? Nobody told me that. <laughs> okay. All right. It's 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 a real bloody good time. That's not good. Hold on. Um. Okay. Okay. It's about two best friends who start a paranormal investigation business together. Because one of them's already dead. Whoa. Big twist. Um. So you got you got a ghost and and a and a not ghost. You know, a breather as as we call them in the game. Um. It's a point and click adventure game. Um, yeah, I'm just obsessed with adventure games. I always have been. I've been doing this classic Gamers Guild podcast for many years, and I figured, um, you know, I have so many opinions. Why don't I just make my own and see, do the best I can? It's maybe a comedy, possibly. <laughs> you guys will maybe let me know if that worked out, but hopefully it's a comedy is what I'm trying to say. And, I, yeah, I tried to basically incorporate all the things I like about adventure games, like being able to switch between characters, especially when one character has... Um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to covertly silence my child. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, especially, like, I like to be able to switch characters, but he's not listening. Uh, especially when one, one of the characters has, like, an ability that the other one doesn't, so obviously ghosts can do things and a live person can't, and vice versa. So it's got that going. It's got, like, an in-game um, dialogue-based kind of hint system. Um, kind of made it as a, a, almost like a legacy project for for my for my son I'm, a, I'm like a only parent to him so I always have these like paranoias that I won't get to say all the things to him that, that I want to say so in this game has a lot of like mentorship and things like that that the ghost gives to, to the, the breather um, that's, that's also kind of coming from coming from the bloody heart you know stuff I really want my kid to hear and and he's got a you know yeah a lot of that going on what else um, one thing I, I did that, that I'm excited about, frankly, is um, I always thought in adventure games there was like these moments in the game where um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see me doing the hand wave thing. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the stand. Um, there's this moment <laughs> in adventure games where he's got like six Krabby Patty gummies stuffed in his mouth, just bouncing like ah. ah. Um, okay, yeah, take it easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in adventure you, games. Paul. <laughs> 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 this pitch is not going well. I'm aware of that, but it's we're gonna just muscle through it. Okay, so I did this thing where it's, it takes place during seven days. So there's seven different locations, and the one thing I'm especially proud of, you could say, is that um, you can travel back to previous locations um, in the game, and you can do so. Or the reason would be to, I mean, there's like more gags and jokes and fun times to be had by just exploring it, but also. Uh, it's kind of the game's source of alternate puzzle solutions. Because my thing with adventure games was always like, earlier in the game you'd see like a hammer, and then later in the game you'd like really need a hammer, so instead of going to just get the hammer that you clearly saw, you'd have to like, you know, make one out of, out of graham crackers and I, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so the point being is like, if it, trying to tie in this kind of real world feel, well if you saw something earlier in the game that might help you now, like you could just, you could just go get it, potentially, hopefully. Um, so little things like that um, is, is what I've injected in this game to hopefully make it, you know, something something exciting and fun to play. And there's tons of hotspots for all the people that grew up on Sierra. That's another thing. I tried to kind of blend Sierra and LucasArts where, you know, the hint system and things like that prevent it to where there's no dead ends or anything like that. And you can keep moving forward. Um, but there's deaths. But you can just auto-restore the deaths. So it's just trying to blend those kind of things. Everything is a hotspot. So there's tons of unique lines for, for the ghost and the breather throughout the game. And... I'm just, I'm talking a lot, feeling a little cotton mouth, I'm going to tap out. <laughs> you don't even uh, have to pitch the game. You could end it at, like, uh, this is a legacy game for my child, and we all would have purchased <laughs> it. Like, I, we'll, even those of us who probably get free copies got to purchase the game. It's yeah, a, I mean, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about your kid. Help well, me out. Oh, I misunderstood. <laughs> Oh yes, very much looking forward to that. Let's let's finish off the the demos that we can announce. And I found my my list, so I'm oh, I can huge. breathe a little bit better now. Okay. Um, also is going to be a President Rocket game. Super super funny game, as you guys will soon find out. Um, this may be the the greatest and most funniest game title of all time. It's called Queer Quest, all in a gay's work. Uh, that one's a, that was a good a good title, and if you guys could think of a of, of a better pun in an adventure game name, you guys let us know in the comments here, or in the chat. Uh, also, it's going to be um, let's see, we have some oh we have Colossal Cave, 
is going to be showcasing some of their adjustments and changes and all the cool stuff that they continue to keep on uh, dropping on us. And uh, hopefully the VR the version. I'm, I'm really excited to play that version. I, I played the regular PC version, but... Uh... Uh, I mean, sounds first of all, like it is only changes since it first came out that it's like they say it's almost like a totally different game, but I, I really want to experience it in VR. Sounds like you're going to get a chance to there. Okay. It'll be a, they'll have the, the VR there. Um, summer really days. Good. Yeah, summer days is going to uh, is going to be there. There is a lot, but I have not. They haven't gotten back with me on. There was a little bit of uh, some confusion as to if they had to be there uh, to showcase some of the games. And so we've been kind of going back and forth with uh, with a lot of the developers and just trying to verify that uh, they will be there. And so we'll have more coming up, uh, announcements coming up over the next couple of weeks for sure. I think we'll have it. Yeah, just in case people five. didn't recognize the name, Summer Days is the next game from uh, Laurie and Corey Cole, um, the second installment in that fantasy series in the hero you universe yeah yeah and it's a it, it's a good one i think everybody will will really enjoy enjoy that one yeah i just want to uh, jump in here i don't want to i'm not picking favorites in terms of what um what's coming but i just want to give a special shout out to wildwood down i think it's like a really interesting game um it, it stars a young man with down syndrome um, and it's based on an actual friend of the developers. And uh, like they say, like, believe me, this is not a sort of diversity hire, mm -hmm. quote unquote. It is no. like this guy's a ton of fun. He's a big time gamer and stuff like he deserves to have his own game. Um, and he will be there. Uh, the real life um, man that the game is based on will be there, uh, plus the developers. So. I really think that's going to be an interesting demo to check out. Well, there's a demo out already, but uh, I can't wait to meet them and see what else they've got in store. Play the what demo with, with them. Wildwood Down. Wildwood Down. Wildwood Down. Wildwood Down. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's Crashable Studios, but I might be... I got so many studio names rattling around in my brain that that might be confusing. Another that uh, that we can talk about, we don't know the extent of how, how deep it's going to go, but one that I am personally excited about, and I'm sure a bunch of people are excited about as well, is uh, is The Last Arc, which is uh, mm -hmm. Matt Von Roon, Van Roon's uh, game. Uh, many people know him from his, his work with some of the, the later uh, Tex Murphy games. And so he created his own studio now came out with a, a, a teaser trailer recently for his new game and uh, looks great truly and as I as I have said a few times I would I would bet on Matt he just seems like a, the, the type of guy who's gonna make it make it in the industry and I'm super excited to to see what he has coming on in the horizon so and for the announcements we're gonna hold off on uh, some of the names until little bit later so it's not going to be on this event but we will be having more of these type of events events coming up um you know most of them already but there's uh, quite a few more and we still trying to to make sure that we can say say their names because some of them have requested it they don't know if they're going to be involved in a formal setting or just they're coming as fans and so we don't want to kind of throw out their names just yet so Give us maybe a... Uh, go ahead. Two more games. Um, I was surprised not to hear the name Fogtown on your list because, yes, we are... This will be the sort of world premiere of the Fogtown demo. So we're working hard on that. Um, did you not pitch Fogtown? No, I just... Oh. Did I? I remember yeah. I talked about it, but what was the context? Well, I mentioned that Fogtown's going to be it. Oh, was that... Oh, all right, see, all right, my... All right. The Man, two of us together, first, aging, aging ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what was the other one? Okay. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> what, all right. One name, I'm going to do something that I shouldn't do here and ambush uh, Francisco. Say, I did not hear the name Rosewater um, among the demo list. Come on, Francisco. Bring, please bring Rosewater. Do, oh, if I bring Rosewater, do I have to, like, stand at the table the whole time? We'll, we'll get some schmuck off the street to stand there. 
that that's Jeff's job is to make people uh make people just, do the work. He's working the floor. I'll be yeah, I mean, I I'd be happy to demo it if if it means that I can like not be chained to the table the whole time because you know I no I, I want to enjoy the conference. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'll wear a I want people hat. to be able to right. Yeah, I'll 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 gladly wear a cowboy hat and bring my uh, deputy stickers and say mosey on over to the table over there and play rosewater or something. I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna be seeing some of uh some of Francisco, a lot of Francisco over the weekend. Well, there's, not too much of them. I hope there's there's no. more that we'll we'll announce uh, later on. There's some fun okay. some fun stuff, but I do want to say uh, we do have tickets are open to to purchase again through uh, adventuregamefanfare.com. So you could go over right now, click 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 adventuregamefanfare.com. It has Wait, a countdown. Opened up ticket sales. Yeah, so we're reopening up as of uh, like 26 minutes ago. Like oh. ticket sales are, are opened up. There is quick the social media, everybody. <laughs> yeah, There's everybody pro... head to the website. See adventuregamefanfare.com. Hey. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, so we game need game. that soundbite. <laughs> 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 yeah, see? Are the noises like this, see? Okay, so I, it runs out pretty quickly. Well, we can, you know, when it comes to the Kickstarter, we were selling packages, and now you can buy individual days for those who can only make it a day. Step right or, up! Or, okay, or two. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. You only need the edge <laughs> of your less. seats. <laughs> the edge of your Spe seats. Speaking yeah. of only making it, like, I have to, I really have to go, but I'm so glad I got to, like, come in and, and, uh, and hang out with you folks, because it's a lovely time, and I can only imagine it's going to be even better in July when we get to do this in real life. So, mm -hmm. um... I'm not, I'm gonna have to cut cut for now, but thank you so much for inviting me, and I'll see anyone who's coming to Adventure Game Fanfare. And yeah, it's good to see you people in the videos. Good to see you, Julia. Julia. Good to see yeah. you soon, Julia. We'll Too soon. You. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I am okay, going to follow. I'm going to follow Julia on the exit train. It was really nice to talk to all of you. I'm really stoked for Adventure Game Fanfare. Sounds like a bunch of cool stuff is going to be happening. Sounds like a bunch of very cool people are going to be there. Um, and hopefully, you know, I'll drop into one of these announcement streams again. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys have more to say. save your game, everybody. Incredible, incredible podcast. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Every Thank week. You. you know what's going to be really, really cool? Uh, I just... uh, yeah. Hi. Matt? Hey, what's hey. up? Hey. Sorry, sorry. Whoops. Well, well, how's it going, God, Matt? That's all we're <laughs> oh. thought those idiots would never shut up. Oh, am I back on? So I just realized that almost all of us in here today are going to be staying at the same place. We're going to like, so we're all just going to be having a, a heck of a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, we're going what, what are we going to do? Like when we're not at the at the fanfare? Shots, shots, shots. I, shots, I, shots, I, I imagine shots. trolls will be doing shots. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh man. Yeah, so we're gonna be a, a lot of us are gonna be hanging out well, in the, see, same, we're gonna do the same place. Is, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna um when you're not looking, we're gonna slip oh. some uh calming uh some sedative into your into your tea, Josh. And you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be in a locked room and then you have twenty four hours to figure out how to puzzle your way out. And we'll be on the other side of the door giving you hints. Oh man, do I have an hour? Is this is this gonna be you like Saw Six? You have, you have twenty four hours. Yeah, this, oh, that's man. much too long. Yeah, he brags about how great he is at solving puzzles. So oh yeah. oh man, we so we're getting twenty minutes. The oh, only tool you'll have is a rubber stamp. Well, it, it, it depends on if there's a lot of a, a lot of clues. So I'll say this uh, for those who may not know, I've mentioned this mentioned this a few times. Uh, it has. It's been a little difficult uh, for me over the past, uh, gosh, maybe three or four months. And you may have noticed it in some of like, our podcasts or like my videos. I've had to change like some of the videos that I make because I've been doing some uh, a, a treatment that has been really messing with my brain. And so, like, it's really bad. Like when I'm reading out loud, every five words, I can say it in my head but I can't actually articulate it. And uh, it's, it, it's hopefully, I thought it would be going away by now, but uh, we've, 
we recently started it back up. And so, oh, it's been it's been really, really difficult. So if you notice like some changes or me buying a lot of time or really just being kind of hay brains, it's it's because it's because of that. I'm trying to make it as as uh, fake it and make it. But um, it's been been pretty difficult. That's why we keep Jack Jack around, and I've got like Jeff always there just in case I'm falling. That's a bad <laughs> so, backup plan, man. Oh man, yeah. I'm so speaking for myself, not Jeff. <laughs> yes, yeah. So there is that. I, I mainly wanted to say that because that is one of the things that I was having an issue with. I was looking at my; it was literally on my document right in front of my face, and I wasn't processing uh, properly. So. Anyways, now that we're all entirely uh, entirely uncomfortable, hey, tell us what we're going to be doing at our party when we're going to be hanging out and, and having a we're good time talking on. about adventure games. Speaking of escape rooms, yes. I know we have an escape room, um, two of them, I think, mm -hmm. um, like an actual real-world escape room yes. uh, event, one with Ken and Roberta Williams mm -hmm. and another with Al Lowe. Um, yes. I'm... Like, it's are, not are up on the site yet. Available? Yeah, so for Ken and Roberta Williams, there will be two more tickets available to go on the to do the escape room with Ken and Roberta Williams. But um and Al, I think there's four more tickets that are available. We haven't put them made them available for for purchasing yet, but that'll probably be within the next week or something on the on the website. Also there's some more fun stuff that we're going to be doing like uh we're the after party so jeff and and his husband gave us uh there was a, a treat when it comes down to a, a nice venue that we're going to be doing on on friday night tell us about a little bit about the venue jeff oh yeah sure so um the university of washington is um in downtown tacoma it's right on the foss waterway it's uh this really gorgeous area that, uh, as Pushing Up Roses is pointing out, it's uh, it's right across the street from the Chihuly Glass Museum. Uh, absolutely stunning exhibit. Um, and right next door to that is the Tacoma Convention Center. And it's right in the middle of where all the hotels are that I imagine a lot of you are uh, going to be staying at. Um, I believe uh, Gareth is doing some work trying to um, coordinate some booking mm -hmm. for people. Um, and uh yeah so we got a, a a huge room i think we actually have two rooms um and you know we're hoping to get some really cool stuff together we're talking about doing some karaoke maybe some late night uh more uh adult oriented uh less uh, uh, uh severe uh panels i don't know severe is not the right word but pg-14 you know, a, a little more loosey goosey casual yeah yeah it'll yeah. just be a, it'll, it'll just be a fun vibe um and and we're hoping everyone uh you know i think a lot of people are going to be there um uh are going to go straight from the convention after that's going to be um on friday night the first night so that was our, our our stretch goal that was two of our stretch goals uh at once was um getting that half day on friday which mm -hmm. thank you everyone for helping us get there um, everyone who contributed to the Kickstarter, and then also having that uh, after party. And we got a, a room big enough to get just about everybody who's going to be at the convention uh, in the party. So, Yeah, we're going yep. uh, to have a DJ. Uh, actually, a, a couple different DJs. So there, I think there's going to be a pretty good balance between uh, stuff that's making noises in the background. Some, some... Yeah, we're going to be playing like Euro <laughs> Industrial at max volume. Uh, you're not going to hear anyone you're talking to, but you know who cares? Uh, when you that's, first started that's... describing it, I started thinking of the, the Scum Bar and Malay Island. You're like two rooms. I'm like, okay, people partying in the front, a panel in the back. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Some pirate swinging on like a chandelier. Yeah. Every room have, has has a different theme. Chandelier, that's obligatory, <laughs> and there's a lot of chandeliers, so it's going to be a lot of pirates that might fall on your head. But it's you know hazard of the game. Yeah, and there's drinking. There will be there will be booze there, so that's cool. <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, uh, but booze. Trolls, <laughs> yeah, trolls will be doing his uh, his DJ set stuff, and um. We'll have some some comedy and yeah as jeff mentioned mentioned there will be some after hour um 
after our shows that we're going to be doing. It's going to be a lot of fun. PG-14, maybe. And anyone who, who is not, you know, familiar with what Trolls does as, uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what is it now? Is it one? Uh, Era 47, Era 47. Uh, is banned now. Uh, he does uh, reworkings of specifically of uh, iconic adventure game music. So it's going to be really fun. It's going to be relevant. It's not going to be Euro industrial warehouse music. So I'm mean, not tried. I really tried, I mean, but, tried but really everybody shot me down. Like immediately. Yeah, no one wanted it. <laughs> I'm okay yeah. with Euro industrial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've had a, a very, very busy team that's been putting forth a, a lot of, a lot of time. And I want to make sure that everybody gets their 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 proper credit a lot of them are are in here we got jack and and jeff cade's been doing a, a terrible a terribly um, i say terrible a, a terrible terrible job. amount a terribly yeah, high yeah. what's Great the word an incredibly of... incredibly large amount uh, of, of a cool stuff for the the convention gareth has uh just about everything uh that you've what we've ever dreamed of we say this would be great and gareth is like Done. I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Granted. <laughs> uh, I and like then logistics. Of course, Gareth... Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me ask you, Gareth, real quick. Well, let me finish what we're doing. Actually, let me give the the shout out. So we have Alex and her husband Daniel Greenberg, who are going to be who have been uh, putting together a lot of the panels and, and a lot of the events. They've been working tirelessly. Uh, Jeff and his husband's been has been getting everything prepped for the floor, doing all the floor logistics, and we'll be there along with everybody's going to be doing a bunch of other stuff there. And then we've had these guys over here, the the Classic Gamers Guild uh, podcast, who they're going to be on site. Who's going? They're going to be talking and doing their show stuff during the convention like in i'll be following people and... around opening up big boxes and reading them strategy guides there's just there's no way to stop me by the time i get there paul will be asking people what you're wearing what are you wearing today like who are you who are you representing oh man yeah we're gonna have a, a cosplay um wow we're gonna be doing a cosplay contest this is gonna be super fun what are you guys wearing or what do you guys bring coming as yeah. Oh, us. <laughs> well, we were coming kind of representing a, a little bit, a little touch of what, a little touch of Monkey Island, technically, right? I know. Paul. Was that? Yeah, surprise? that was me I, handing I, it to you. I yeah. Know, I don't know how you guys multitask. <laughs> it took me like all my brain power. Big. Like, Hi, Brandy. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to how to talk to people. Um. Yeah, well, we are going to have some custom sure. gear, so at least that. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got shirts that say Classic Gamers Guild, and then and then it says "Ask me about the Phantom Fellows" in the loom-looking thing. It's terribly clever. You'll see. And and by the time sure we get there, he will totally be able to tell us about Phantom Fellows. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No I'll doubt. That down to a tight, a tight thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Did I miss anybody else who's uh? Obviously, a lot of the Adventure Game Hotspot Network oh, has been oh, involved. I, I have. I don't mean to put you on the spot, uh, Ooh, Josh, but yeah. I, I, I'm curious to uh, for a follow up. You mentioned there were going to be. Um, I, I don't know if this is, but you mentioned that there might be like prizes or drawings oh. or raffles. Or Francisco, kind of have you seen what's been going on with me? You're going to put me on the spot, like. Well, I just wanted to I'd... say that, that I have I have prize I have some yes. stuff I might bring and i can show uh -huh. it to you right now uh, Puppers. yes there's gonna be lots of uh lots of fun prizes and and he's well, gonna showcase show, going... show us what you won vanna i'm gonna print up some more of these Ooh. some nice uh, custom rosewater boxes and so pretty. Uh, i can you know offer them up as uh giveaways if anyone's interested so i'll have to ship them to tacoma but it's all good it's I'll all good it. Yeah, we're going to be having a whole a whole lot of fun. In fact, um, Friday night is uh, it's going to we're going to have what what are we doing on Friday night? <laughs> I, this is the word I'm uh gosh having a party. Yeah, well, no, no Friday the Friday evening. I need yeah, uh, a party. Yeah, we're going to do things um, we're and do stuff, stuff. <laughs> and yeah, it's going to be fun. There's going to be things to see. 
things to hear <laughs> and things to do. I think. But at the show, right. there's going to be a variety hour. So we're going to have some music from some developers. We're going to have, um, we may be seeing some Girl in the Tower being sung. <laughs> Um, there's going to be game shows with developers and, uh, and, and a whole lot of fun. And on Saturday night, we are going to have, uh, the award ceremony, which is going to be like a fiscal year adventure game awards and also the hall of fame, which by the way, results are in. I haven't mm -hmm. told anybody, anybody here, mm -hmm. like what it is, but I'm eager to talk mm -hmm. to, to some of you who are in the, the hall of fame. Dude, for uh, real. Committee. Yeah, Do we have envelopes? Yeah. Do you have fancy envelopes? I hope you have envelopes. We need like ping pong balls that gets popped up and, and you know, you pull them out and say, well, but that would be... Mm. Uh, we're we're going to get envelopes for be, sure. That would be right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, we'll have uh, guests and stuff and fun people who are going to be announcing the announcing who was nominated in. So I hate to put you guys... Uh, I'm going to take a five five minute break if you guys don't mind. Go ahead and talk about me for five That's minutes. That's all right. Like, uh, I was just about to skip out too. We're doing a little Easter Monday thing here, but I really, even though I was on vacation, I really wanted to come here and support the event. I'm super excited. Everybody needs to be super excited and then take that excitement, make it tenfold even more so because it's going to be that awesome. And I'm just, I'm so stoked to be there and to see everybody and just to get it all going. You, you sure you got to leave? <laughs> after I'll that I'll try to come back after <laughs> bye Anna well, I'll be back all in five right. minutes folks all right. thank you Anna bye -bye. thank you Anna. so good to see all of bye. you maybe next time you can see me too <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> so so where do we leave off I got oh, scooted out for to you now <laughs> we all like I need to talk about them <laughs> see what happens who here thinks he's pooping time. <laughs> no, it'll be seven so, and a half, half at least. <laughs> oh, seriously, I, 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 was, I was gone. What were you guys talking about the last few minutes? Because I'm I completely missed it. Uh, how I'm you're in conversation now? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> no, 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 I am not prepared. I was actually going to sort of recap our Hall of Fame nominees, but I don't really want to do that without uh, Joshua here. So yeah. But, uh, a lot of them are a lot of them are obvious because I think a, a lot of um, you know we got a lot of input from the community too. So yeah. Um, can yeah, you tell I, us I don't think thing? there's going to be a lot of surprises in year one, but maybe you can um, tell us a little bit, uh, Jack, about how that um, how that whole process worked. Like, how did the nominations happen? Who voted? You know, who's who's deciding this, and what what's the significance of? The official event of game hall of fame. What? Did anybody else just hear a weird noise? He was noise flushing. I yeah. think he was moving. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I would be happy to answer the question if I sort of knew, but sort of Josh was the one that knows more about the hall of fame than I do. He's kind of been driving the process. Joshua. Oh no. Are you back, Josh? Do have you guys? Have you? Oh man, this is uh, this is. Things great. fell apart quickly. Yeah. You were talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> so the Hall of Fame process, um, I, I'm sorry, guys. I um, okay, maybe I should have kept it in mind. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I can jump in a little bit here. Um, I, I know, you know, there there was a, a a committee process basically where where you know, AGH reached out to um, notable developers, members of the community. Um, uh, and just kind of got this whole nomination process rolling. So basically we kind of uh, put together a, a committee and that committee uh, kind of put their heads together, threw out some names for nominations. There was a big uh, voting process where uh, everyone who was a member of the committee put down a, a, a big list of, of names they wanted to put forth. And then all of those votes were, were tallied into sort of a, a top whatever uh, tier. And then at that point, those nominees were sent out to um, other members of the community, the v original voting community, and also the press. So I know that a lot of, um, of, of big PC gaming publications were uh, involved in helping pick those nominees too. So this isn't just like we, you know, got together and like five people decided. 
Uh, this is also, you know, this is also in in uh, in collusion with the um, International Video Game Hall of Fame. So this is uh, this is the first officially recognized adventure game Hall of Fame. This isn't just a, a you know a, a, a slapdash thrown together thing. We're really excited and, and proud of, of uh, this process and the results that that it's it's going to yield and how we're going to present it because uh, this has never been done before. It's a really exciting opportunity. Well I done. Think you did, I think you did a, a great job. Jeff's Jeff's <laughs> going back on payroll, guys. <laughs> uh, I I feel like I do want to let everybody know. I do feel like really, really, I apologetic. I feel like that I should have given. It deserves to have more credit than I've been able to properly announce it. I do this for a living. I'm a radio show host, and I like I said, things are not working, and I'm terribly far sorry. In fact, I might not be able to continue i know i promised everybody four hours but um i i don't think i'll be able to to continue with this and yeah. i apologize everyone unless okay, you guys want to uh want to continue without me but uh i am sorry everybody i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to log out for this one apologize jack will you say oh. goodbye for us <laughs> <laughs> and i'm yeah yeah, if you could say goodbye for us, that'd be that would be great. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you, guys, Thank all you, so Josh. much. Thank and I you, promise, Josh. I I hope I promise I should probably be doing better once we get to uh, once we get to the convention. <laughs> but I'm not doing any panels, so we should be okay. But it's all we're, it's all good. We did quite a lot today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was I'm a good college really time. I can't tell you how excited I am. It's, um, yeah. I'm just tired, so I don't look animated, but I'm actually deeply excited about this. <laughs> so I'll, I will just say, you know, for people who are planning on coming um, to the convention, you know, it, we're a real uh, accessible group, the kind of planning committee. I live out here. Um, I'm happy to give you um, any kind of recommendations for, um, you know, where to stay, things to do. Gareth is... Um, uh, has volunteered to be a uh, concierge for um, people who are, are making the trip and, and need help with figuring out their accommodations. Um, the more people we can get uh, responding to his travel survey, the better. Is that still in the work? Uh, so, uh, so, still available. Still available. So, so that was mainly for uh, staff and guest panelists and speakers. Uh, I haven't opened that up to anyone in public yet. Okay, fair enough. Never mind. Maybe. Back. But... Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I can, I can at least try and direct you to some places to stay. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's going to be a lot of, I, I recommend things to do in Tacoma, but, uh, the, the, the convention is going to take up most of your time. Um, there's plenty of food and beverage in the immediate walking vicinity. There's a, a, a nice, um, like restaurant bar scene directly across the street from where the convention is taking place. Uh, the campus is absolutely beautiful. It's right in downtown, but it's not so in downtown that you're going to get, you know, harassed by uh, uh, people walking around. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's 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 a really exciting place to have a first um, convention. So, and who knows what will happen in the future? You know, if, if 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 this is successful and we're able to do this again, you know, it could the location could change. I know a lot of people. Um, uh it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a a long um travel for a lot of people uh especially people who have never been out here before a lot of people only know seattle uh tacoma is right next to seattle it's the same metropolitan area so uh definitely plenty of stuff to do plenty of uh people to see plenty of places to stay so i'm thinking next year we should somewhere in the caribbean yes yeah <laughs> I won't be. Yeah, there, I got but... a long plane trip anyway, so let's make it a few hours longer. And yeah, I'm in. I know we called it in Iceland, so it's like halfway closer to Europe because there's a bunch of people over there that would probably love to come to this because. It's... No way! Did, did you not see what happened to that professor in Faith of Atlantis? He left him there. He came back, and he's all frozen in the ice. Well, I think another important thing about this convention is you know uh, Europe's had Adventure X for several years, and, and this. But it's off this year. Right, right, yeah. This is the first time that, that we've had a, an adventure game 
specific convention in North America. So this is an opportunity for, uh, you know, people who, you know, like me, who can't afford to go travel to Europe. Um, and, and another cool thing about, you know, um, it wasn't just an accident. This location wasn't just an accident. This is where a lot of, um, an, an, an inordinate amount of the devs who were involved in creating the genre live today. So, you know, this is where uh, uh, Sierra was headquartered for, um, like, the last part of their existence. Um, you know, some of the LucasArts guys live out here, too. Dynamix. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Dynamics. Uh, um, a lot of those guys live in, in Oregon, which is part of the Pacific Northwest. So it's it's a it's an easier trek for a lot of the people that are going to be uh, involved in, in, in as guests of honor and in the panels and accepting the uh, awards and honors and stuff. Francisco, Francisco you've been, you've been um, to a bunch of um, conventions before. What what is your takeaway from your time there? Why should people come to a convention, you know, in person if they can just watch it streamed or? play the demos on their own computers? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been to uh, I've been to a few different conventions. I've been to GDC, I've been to PAX West and East, and I've been to Adventure X. And I definitely have to say that something like Adventure X is my favorite. And I'm pretty sure that the Adventure Game Fanfare is, well, I'm more than pretty sure. The Adventure Game Fanfare yeah. is going to be that same vibe. That like, is the same vibe. Yeah, so like, you know, stuff like GDC obviously is, is for developers who want to network and it's very big and there's lots of people and you might get to know some people, but it's very, you know, very, you don't spend a lot of time with people necessarily. And like PAX is also big and it's more fan oriented sometimes, but it's also just a lot. <laughs> So I, I have come to love these more intimate conferences, um, you know, just a few hundred people, because you really do feel like you get a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with people. And yeah, I mean, you can watch it and, and it's great to watch online, but there's just something about being in the same room as, as you know, your favorite developers and seeing them in person and getting to talk to them and stuff. It's it's really a, a lot of fun. And just, yeah, you know, you get weird moments. Like, you know, if you have karaoke, like, what if you end up doing karaoke with Roberta Williams? That would be a story, right? Like, you know? Yeah. So, so it's definitely a lot of fun. And, I mean, I'm looking forward to it if that's not obvious. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope that answered the question. Oh, it does. And that, yeah, I think sort of there's one word that we sort of had in mind for this entire event, it's community. Like, yeah. there's a real sense of community among adventure game fans, and there's nothing quite like bringing that community together. And, you know, we haven't had a chance to do that in North America. And, you know, I can't afford to fly out to Europe to Adventure X either. So this is sort of the first chance for me. I've been to bigger conventions too, but yeah, it's just chaos and hecticness and, you know, good for what they are. But I mean, I can't wait to just hang out with you guys and other developers and stuff like that. And from people that have been to Adventure X, I often sort of hear the phrase friends for life, you know, like sort of almost to a person, they come away saying, yeah, it was a great time, blah, blah, and I met friends for life. And you know, that's what we want you know people to enjoy from the adventure game fanfare too it's you know yeah you, that's this is, it'll be intimate it'll be sort of cozy and you know have a chance to actually get to know people not just brush shoulders with them in a crowd kind of thing so and that's the great thing about the adventure game community is that everybody is very passionate and very supportive and very accepting and very friendly like it's there's you know you hear all these horror stories about other game genre communities and stuff but like the adventure fans are are good people and like you know i there's never been any real drama that i can think of at any adventure game related convention so you know i don't think that's that's just we're chill people so that's good we'll have yeah, to we try and inject a little bit of drama in ours but no no it'll be pure, purely <laughs> contrived drama but yeah i mean i think it's like it, I, I don't want to say once in a lifetime opportunity because we hope to do it again. But although maybe meeting some of these amazing Sierra legends will be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
Like I, I'm really excited to meet and hang out with you guys too, but come on. I also get to meet Jane Jensen. Are you kidding me? Like that's. <laughs> well, and that's yeah. another thing, you know, we could touch on too, is this is uh, one of the big things that we're, we're touting about the convention is the Sierra reunion, uh, which is super exciting. You know, uh, having all of these Sierra developers together in the same room for um, maybe a lot of them for the first time in, in, in decades even. Uh, and, and it's, you know, it might give the impression that that this is a Sierra convention, uh, which it's not. It's, uh, you know, this is this is for all adventure gamers, uh, new and old for where we want to support, you know, the old the old guard and the new. Um, it, it just is a, it's sort of a coincidence of, of timing that uh, it works out for a lot of these uh, devs and they are all local and um also you know the adventure game hall of fame we're talking about um about historical uh adventure games here we're talking about you know sierra essentially invented the genre so we're going to be probably be seeing a lot of those games honored so it just kind of made a lot of sense to put this all together but that does not mean you should not feel uh welcome or excited if you're a lucas arts fan or if you are you know a westwood fan or you know we are all fans of the genre so yeah absolutely and we are still working hard to get some other non-sierra developers there so you know again we can't sort of name names at this point but you know we're, we're still trying to make it happen so yeah because absolutely maybe, yeah you know, I, maybe who knows what will happen in the future maybe we can have a lucas arts reunion for future conventions that would be well awesome. we are certainly thinking along those lines because it yeah. so happened as you said a serendipitous turn of events that you know a bunch of sierra people were thinking about getting together anyway and hey why not you know merge the two but uh you know because like hey if it could work for sierra yeah. maybe yeah it's funny because we kind of had a little preview of this um you know with with pax west 2022 where we got a lot of these guys in the same room uh together um you know when we had the williams and and jane jensen and al Lowe and uh ron gilbert dave gilbert uh all sitting at the same table and it was crazy to see you know the sense like you said the sense of community just this this room of a couple hundred people um and all the connections that were made that's the reason why you know i know all of you guys uh just through coincidence of that um and and you know i've i've talked to some people every day since then uh it's it's really uh exciting to be in the same room with all these people who share this very niche hobby, you know, that that it's hard to even explain. Uh, you know, we talked about a lot about the the definition of an adventure game, and it's something that we all understand in this chat and anyone who's who's watching us right now. But it's one of those things that's hard to talk to your friends about because they don't understand what what you mean by adventure game. So it's nice to be in a room with a bunch of people that you don't have to explain. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Get together with people who understand and geek out together. Yeah. So, well, guys, um, I have family breathing down my neck to uh, get back to our festivities, too. So I'm going to wrap up here. Sorry to everyone out there that we're uh, cutting off a little bit uh, early. But uh, we do thank everyone for um, joining us, for following us. Um, just, uh, just to go over the basics, because I don't even think we've ever said it once in this show, Adventure Game Fanfare is July 26th to 28th um, in Tacoma, Washington. Um, you can find a de our dedicated webpage on AdventureGameHotspot.com. Uh, and tickets are now available again, as they were previously th only through the Kickstarter, at AdventureGameFanfare.com, if I believe. And if I got it wrong, oh, sorry, you'll, you'll find it. Oh, that's F-A-N-F-A-I-R, right? Not to be confused with the actual word fanfare, but although pun totally intended. But uh, anyway, it's uh, going to be a wonderful time. And we're, we're going to have lots more announcements and new details and information posted on our website. And we'll probably do another live stream at some point and fill you in on more details. But uh, kind of too much of a good thing all at once. So let's, oh. Oh, here's the man of the hour himself. Oh, I was just hearing, and I was going to say goodbye to everyone. Yeah, no, that's what I was laying the I was going to do it for you, but take her away. No, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to everybody who showed up again. Sorry, didn't give uh, four hours, but 
thank you, Jeff and Jack and everybody else in here who has picked up for my my struggle here. And thank you, everybody who dropped in. We had quite a few people in here. We really, really appreciate you all. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Yeah.